Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the world of me. Another episode of the Bespoke Post series. Got another package in today, and as you can see, it is fairly wide, not real, not real uh, thick though. And uh, this is called the Woodsman's Kit. Let's go ahead and open it up and see what's inside. All right, everybody. So here we go. We've got uh, the couple of pieces that are in it, plus of course the traditional card, as it says, your Woodsman's box is here, or Woodsman box is here and uh, it has a couple little things right there that is just the two pieces that are in the box and on the back they now have the QR codes discover more that of course will take you to the site and you can check out different things there of course uh, if you want to check out any of the stuff from this you can go down there in the description below there of course is a link down there uh, now what we're gonna do we'll check out eh, let's go ahead with the big one first the big one as you can see this is Bare Bones, which we have gotten a handful of things from them in the past. Uh, Bare Bones does seem to like to work a lot with uh, the uh, Bespoke Post guys. And uh, has, of course, the traditional Bare Bones look. The walnut handle with the rivets um, that are uh, threaded. It has the uh, canvas style sheath that has the hardener on the inside. And then, of course, that kind of their classic leather band that goes around it as well as it has their nice spring clip for the belt or pocket as well as an actual belt loop uh, and that of course is just a basic nylon there uh, webbing so we pop open the snaps here and pop all three open and pull this out now one thing I'll let you note there it does have a piece of plastic in here here's the hardeners and everything that's going to be good to help keep this from getting torn up and it's also going to help keep this safe and as you can see this is a nice little pruning saw uh, now first thing i notice with it is it does have the front finger kind of hold um, that is kind of nice it feels like it's going to give me a little more security and the handle's not going to slide through my hands if for any reason they get wet or anything like that uh, this does have the cross cut pattern uh, rather than, I forget what the other one is, but it's basically a back tooth pattern. The back tooth pattern is more for cutting along the grain. This one, you have that crisscross uh, on the teeth, and with that, it cuts through the, uh, the fibers, um, which are vertical, and you're sitting there cutting across them, basically kind of like you would a knife through a piece of meat. Uh, you want to cut across the grain rather than with the grain. Uh, it's a decent size here. Roughly, we're looking at about, uh, I'm thinking this is about nine and a half, ten 10 inches long. Uh, so pretty decent size, not overly cumbersome, but not so small that you can't really do anything with, like something in them, one of those multi-tools where it's just that little dinky thing, and you're going to sit there and try and saw something for the next half an hour uh, just to get through it. But uh, it has uh, some basic flexibility, of course. There is that standard kind of bare bones look to it, kind of that stonewash look. Now, this is smooth, unlike some of their other uh, implements that they have, of course, their knives and things like that. Those are usually thicker, uh, and the, the look that they have on it is more of an actual natural finish rather than a coating. Uh, this is definitely a coating that's on here. Um, this is probably, and I would have to double check that. We'll take a look and probably link, put that down here as to whether or not this is like a stainless steel is my guess. Now, of course, it does go all the way through like it usually does. It has that little brass or copper kind of uh, sleeve right there. So you can put a uh, lanyard on this if you want to. Uh, maybe have a little wrist clip on it so that if you're working maybe up in a tree, you don't, uh, yeah, and it happens to slip out of your hand, it's maybe still on your wrist and you don't drop it and have to climb all the way back down or anything. All right, so let's go ahead. We're going to take a look at the um, the card here. And on the card, eh, it's got a little bit of information, a uh, really small print there. Uh, we've got a section up here and it's titled uh, Elevate Life Outdoors. And it talks about uh, bare bones and kind of, uh, it looks kind of like a sort of mission statement kind of idea. Uh, I'm not going to go ahead and read through all that for you. That's kind of boring, I think. Uh, it does have the certified thing here with the B, which I believe that means that this is certified bare bones rather than maybe a knockoff. Uh, and above that, it has another little saying, together we are a force for good. And uh, bare bones, it talks about the, 
the quality and uh, possibly some of the other things that they're into. Uh, now down here at the bottom, it does say timber saw and uh, there are a few little points here. It has a one year limited warranty. It has, uh, well, it says a durable walnut handle. As I said, they usually have a walnut handle. Um, I don't know that they've made anything that doesn't have that. That's kind of a signature thing, just like their, their sheaths uh, with that green and the leather. As well, it also has what they call a rugged and mold resistant polyester sheath. So this is of course polyester. Um, and uh, it's not bad. I, I do notice the kind of the covering, the canvas on this is not like the older stuff. The older stuff is more of a solid canvas. This feels thinner. Uh, so it is just the sheath. So as long as the quality on the blade hasn't gone down, I'm not as bothered by it, but uh, it does make me want to keep an eye on this. So if you're getting bare bones products, as you go along and collect more and more of them, pay attention and see if their quality is actually going down. I know obviously they do have to change for uh, costs and things like that. Sometimes they can't get the materials, whatever. Uh, so that could be the concern with what this is. But, um, you know, that's up to you as to how you want to deal with that. And then we also have where it just talks about the blade. And this is a curved SK5 steel blade. And so that's, that's the type of steel that's in this is SK5, uh, which is a type of stainless, as I remember. Um, for those of you who are metallurgically sound minded or whatever, you can maybe say something down there in the descriptions and let us know maybe a little more about it uh, and say, okay, hey, is this going to be a good durable one or is this going to be something that's going to wear out um, or maybe what its special qualities are in, in terms of that type of metal. I uh, definitely would love to see that down there if you know. And uh, let's see, it just says that it uh, helps to increase control of cutting larger branches. So obviously, you know, you're probably going to cut maybe two, three inch branches that you could cut with this. Uh, maybe even up to four inches or so. Um, it is fairly small. If you're starting to get anything four, four or maybe a little more above four inches, I would probably think to get something a little bigger. Um, but if you're out camping, uh, you got to use what you have and you don't want to carry something big and cumbersome. The nice thing about this with it being uh, smaller is you can, of course, take it with you. It does have the uh, belt loop, the clip there. The clip, of course, can uh, go on to backpack, a pocket, something like that. If you happen to have a backpack that has the molly loops, uh, this should be small enough to fit right down into those molly loops, uh, which would be really nice um, in that aspect because you can put it anywhere. Those molly loops can be all over a bag, so you can position it wherever you want and have it in the most convenient spot for you. Uh, but I think what we're going to do, we're going to try this outside. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get maybe, a, you know, obviously tree branch. If I can't get a tree branch for some reason, we'll... Uh, We'll go ahead and maybe just use something like a 2x4 or a 2x2. Obviously, that's going to be dried pine, so it'll be a little easier maybe. Uh, or it may actually be a little harder because it's, it's dried. Uh, and so it maybe hardens up a little bit. Some of that uh, wet stuff is a little softer. But before we do that, we'll go ahead and hit this right here. And this is, uh, it says Barnberry, uh, or Barnaby Black. Uh, and it is Bramble, it's Bramble Scars. Uh, it's a lip balm. Uh, now, one thing about these uh, with the, the basic lip balms, the kind of standard kinds that these are, like a petroleum jelly sort of style or uh, sort of the semi-wax type of styles, uh, these are really good if you get little nicks and cuts, like it says, bramble scars. You get little nicks and cuts on your legs, your arms, or whatever when you're working. If you happen to get into the brambles, like things, for example, something like a rose bush, of course, has those little... Uh, thorns on it and you get pricked and, and start to bleed or whatever you can sit here and use this and go over it and it will actually act like a uh, basically like a real simple band-aid um, they work really good with very small things paper cuts things of that nature so it's really good actually to have on you if you have like an edc type of kit uh, so not a bad idea definitely with something like this that's great because you're probably going to get some splinters at some point and uh, if you get a bigger one that you pull out and it happens to bleed a little, you can stop that by using something like this. So, uh, but anyhow, let's go ahead out there. Let's check this out uh, and we'll see how well it works. All right, everybody, we're outside. As you can see, I've got the saw here 
and I did not have a stick that I could use, so I got the next best thing that I could think of, which is actually an old piece of pallet. Um, this is, well, not really 2 by material, but what they call 2 by material, we'll call it that. Sorry about the background noise there. But uh, as you can see, this is pretty reasonable size. This is a, about 2 inches right here. Um, and then we're looking at about an inch and a quarter or so right there. And uh, let's go ahead and see how well this cuts. Now this is dry. Um, this is not pine. This is some kind of a hardwood, but I'm not sure what kind. Uh, so let's just go ahead and try it out here. And uh, And there we go. And uh, pretty nice cut there. Just kind of focused in here. There we go. A little bit. Anyhow, so there we go. There's our cut. Um, here he is. Obviously, the saw, and I cut through it real simple, real easy, real clean. All right, guys, so if you guys want to check this out or any of the other uh, items there from Bespoke Post, go ahead down there in the description below. I do have a link down there. Matter of fact, if you haven't gotten anything from them before uh, and you want to get a box, say this one or one of the other ones, uh, go ahead and use that link. It's going to get you 20 bucks off of your first box, uh, of which, you know, obviously that's not bad. Taking your first box from about $50, give or take, uh, they do charge... Uh, shipping or tax depending on which state you're in in the US uh, so different ones will have have that if you're not in a state where they have a uh, like an outpost or a depot of some type uh, you're probably not going to pay that so that's just something as an aside of course while you're down there don't forget to check out the social media there's of course the PayPal link if you want to help out the channel a little bit I definitely appreciate that anyhow That'll do it for me today, guys. This is, of course, another episode from the Bespoke Post series. My name's Cougar with the world of me. I'd like to wish you all a good day, and I will see you later. Bye.